Hey babe, I got dumped. <laughs> the dumping itself didn't hurt that much, but the journey that led to it did. And I kind of alluded to it at the start, or sorry, the end of the last video, but I'm gonna go back to the beginning now that it's finally over and kind of walk you through everything so you understand what happened. So it's that same girl that I met last time I was in Flores, so about a month and a half ago. We matched the last day or I think, yeah, the last day that I was there and I wasn't really sure what my plans were and she's like, well, I'm looking for someone who's more like serious, who wants to build something long term and for me, since I'm traveling, that's kind of difficult. So we're like, all right, let's just be friends. So we've been chatting for the last month or so, just getting to know each other as friends. But I noticed that in the last like two weeks, let's say things were kind of starting to escalate into the more than friend zone. And eventually I was looking about like a week, week and a half ago, I was looking and I'm like, all right, I have about a week after I'm done. She's working. So what if I just go out for the weekend? Like it's a nine hour bus ride or a one hour flight, but the flight's expensive. It's like 150 bucks. I'm like, is it worth going? But I'm like, I know I'm going to regret not meeting her because a few weeks before she came to the city, for her job and we thought we'd be able to see each other but turns out we weren't because everything was planned out for her work and i was like i'm gonna regret if i don't get to meet her even if nothing happens whatever it doesn't matter so i'm like would you be open to me going there for a weekend turns out she was actually free for a week like five days so i'm like okay cool i'm just gonna go there as soon as i'm done my challenge we can you know spend together like be together for five days get to know each other and everything and see what happens and things escalated quickly from there. We went from just, you know, more from being just friends, I guess, to way more than friends. And it just got to the point where very quickly, because we'd been connected over the last month or so, we knew each other very well. And we're like, all right, let's give this a try. We're going to have like five days a week together. Let's just go all out. And we literally got to the point where I think it was on Wednesday. Then I'm like, then I made the offer and she's like, yeah, sure, let's do it. And within two days, we decided, all right, since we don't want to wait a week for my challenge to be over, why don't I go over there now, spend like the day at her place right during the day, finish my challenge there. And then when she comes back from work at night, we can be together. And things went quickly from there. It's like, okay, we literally got to the place where even though we never met, we're like, all right, we're a couple just because we don't probably don't have much time together. So let's just go all out so we won't have any regrets. And I also started looking like, is there any way for me to extend my stay and stuff like that in case, you know, things went well and I wanted to stay longer and see where it could be. So we got to that point and then after a few days into that, where things were getting really like intense and really looking forward to seeing each other and everything, out of the blue, she's like, I can't do this. And I'm like, what? She's like, I can't do this. Like, I know that we can't have something long term and that's what I'm looking for. And I know it's going to be painful at the end. And I don't want to go through that pain. And my perspective is it's probably going to end in pain. It's probably going to hurt, but I much prefer going through that suffering than never experience the joy that comes before it. And always getting, like, having that sense of regret of, oh, what would have happened if we tried? But of course, you know, when you're two people, you both have to agree. It's not because one person decides they want to do it, that both people have to do it. So her decision to, for us to not see each other, really hurt. Like, I didn't realize how invested I was into this until she announced that. And it's like, it literally felt like my heart was ripped out and it's just like, cried for like an hour and yes it was a lot that but there's also other stuff of like realizing all right ever since I started traveling like I've been you know dating here and there and nothing very serious but I was always hoping like hey maybe I'll meet someone if I do then I can stay there for a while see if it's gonna lead to something but that kind of her decision made me realize like okay I can't do that that's not gonna work if I'm traveling, it has to be something casual. There's a slight, very slight chance it could lead to something more serious, 
but I can't keep getting my hopes up, my expectations up, because when that happens, it just destroys me. So I'm like, all right, I can't do that. And it's sucked in everything, and I'm like, I know myself, I've become very good at communication and you know psychology and things like that, and if I wanted to, I could probably change her mind, but I'm like, it's not fair to her, I don't wanna be that person, I don't wanna force anyone to do anything they don't wanna do, so I just accepted it, and it sucked. And then the next day, she's like, what if I told you I changed my mind? To which my response was, then I would ask if you're sure. Because unless you're sure, we shouldn't do this because I can't go through that pain again and I don't think you want to either. And of course, she took that to mean that I wasn't interested anymore, I didn't want to go. When in fact, that wasn't the case. It's just because of the way, instead of saying like, hey, I changed my mind, I want you to come. She's like, what would you say if? Which implies that she wasn't sure. So anyway, there was like this kind of weird back and forth where she's like, yeah, okay, never mind. I didn't say anything. Just pretend like nothing happened. And at that point, I'm like, all right, I know she wants to see me. I know I want to see her. I know I'm going to regret not doing it. So I am now going to use my negotiation skills, I guess you could call them, to convince her because this is both what we, this is what we both want. So that's why I'm like, hey. I know this is what you want, I know this is what I want, so I'm not going to give up until this happens. I want to see you, and I am going to see you. And yeah, it worked. And we planned everything, and I think, hmm, now that I'm thinking back, because it's been kind of a, a little while, now that I'm thinking back, I'm pretty sure that was the point where we decided, all right, I'm going to go now. So she's like, hey, my boss told me I'll be free in the evenings and I can go home because a lot of the time she sleeps at work. And I'm like, all right, cool. So I can go. So I'm like, all right, I'm going to, I packed everything, went to the airport. Unfortunately, they were out of places on the flight for that day. So I couldn't go. So I'm like, all right, either I take the night, night bus tonight to go there or, and arrive exhausted the next day. <laughs> or I take the plane the next day. So I'm like, all right, I'm just going to go buy the ticket for tomorrow go back to the apartment, get everything ready, cancel the, like my apartment, well not this one, the other one that I had, cancel the apartment for the next week or so that I had booked and just go over there. So that was pretty much the plan. So second day and like during that day and a half period, I kept thinking like in the back of my mind, I'm like, okay, I'm fully committed. I don't want to regret anything and I don't want to expect her to change her mind. But in the back of my head, I'm like, there was a chance it could happen again. Happen once, it could happen again. So I, I kind of kept myself from really believing it would happen until I was in the plane. But even in the plane, you're like, yes, yeah, the thing could still happen. So it wasn't until I was finally over there, like in front of her, that I'm like, all right, I guess this has actually happened. <sighs> so that was like the most intense part. And like the, the, initial breakup or whatever, or her changing her mind was what caused me the most pain in everything. Because after that, I'm like, all right, I can't get my hopes up. Whatever's going to happen is going to happen. Okay. So I show up the first night, um, you know, get to know each other, get to finally be together like in real life. And, you know, there were little awkward moments and stuff like that. It's normal when you get to know someone that well and you've never actually met them in real life. But like she was... You know how some people are like more attractive in pictures because they know how to take pictures and then in real life you're like, eh. For some reason, she was the opposite. She's like the most beautiful girl I've ever been with and I'm just like, wow, this is awesome. <laughs> Not, I mean, yes, I know that sounds shallow, but it's just, I don't know, It's it was nice and we really got along and everything. So anyway, first night, just mostly hung out, you know, kissed and a few things and anyway whatever we just got to know each other and then since she had to wake up early we went to bed relatively early next day she goes to work comes back in the evening spend the night together everything was good the only problem is as you know i have certain issues and she also has certain issues and out of respect for her i won't share her issues because it's not my place to discuss but basically I mean, yes, we did have sex, but neither of us finished for because of, you know, those issues. So anyway, whatever. That's not the point. The point is that the next morning, so the morning of the second day that I was there, she seemed kind of distant. I'm like, okay, 
maybe whatever maybe she didn't sleep with sleep well or something but it's like deep down i could sense there was something that changed and a couple hours in she texts me saying like yeah my feelings have changed i don't think we should do this and i'm like okay that sucks can we like have a conversation talk about it tonight so i can understand exactly what happened she's like yeah sure Later in the day, she's like, uh, turns out I can't come back tonight because there's an important guy for my work coming to visit early tomorrow morning and I have to sleep here. Otherwise, I'm going to have to get up like super early to get there. I'm like, okay, that sucks. Especially since the day after, she also had to sleep there because the morning after that, she had a fitness exam she had to pass because she's in the military. So every once in a while, they have fitness exams. So I'm like, all right, basically we're broken up. She's like, I can still stay there until I finish my challenge and then I can leave and whatever. But it's like, I don't really know what happened. I'm staying at her place. She's not coming back for a few days. And I'm just like, I don't know what to do. I still have to do my challenge. Should I just book an apartment back in the capital and go back there now or wait a couple of days, finish my challenge, then go or stay here, finish my challenge and maybe spend a few days with her as friends to kind of get to know each other or whatever. I'm like, I don't really know what's going to be the least awkward. So in the beginning, she was like, hey, you can stay as long as you want. It's not a problem. We can just be friends and whatever. So I'm like, I guess we can give it a try. But then after a couple hours, I'm like, no, nah, it's going to be like way too awkward. So what I decided is I'm going to stay the next two days, finish my challenge. And then she's going to come back on the evening of that last day. We're going to be able to see each other a bit, just kind of maybe have a short conversation for me to understand what happened. And then I'm going to take the bus, leave, come back here, and that'll be it. And that was a plan. However, uh, she decided to come back that day just to... Um, wait, what was it? Yeah, just because she had a little time, like, hey, we can have a conversation. So she literally messaged me, I think, around like four. She's like... Hey, I have some free time. I'll be there in 15 minutes and we can talk. So she comes back, we have a talk, and turns out that it's not that her feelings changed, as it seemed like when she sent me that message, is that basically she changed her mind once more. She's like, hey, you know, you're traveling and you love to travel and that's your dream. That's what you have to do right now. I don't want to hold you back. I'm looking for someone with whom I can share my life, build something, and I don't, I'm not looking to travel like long term. I have this steady job and everything. And it's like, we're not looking for the same things. And I just can't keep investing and falling more in love with you only to have it end badly at the end. So I'm like, okay, it's not like your feelings change and I did something or something happened. So you don't love me anymore. It's just, you don't want to go through that pain. So it's like, all right, at least now I understand. At least that makes sense. Because before I'm like, nothing happened to make her feelings for me change. And I was very confused. So at least that made sense. And yes, it sucked. But hey, at least we gave it a try. And neither, neither of us are gonna regret anything. So anyway, spoke for maybe an hour, then she left, came back the next day because the next day she was supposed to have her sister's birthday. So she was supposed to come back like quickly in the morning just to change go over there, spend most of the day with her family, and then come back in the evening. Then we'd get to hang out a bit, chat, and she'd give me a ride to the bus station. However, once again, change, uh, plans were changed, and her sister ended up working. And since it was a surprise party, she didn't know otherwise, so all the plans got canceled. So pretty much she arrived at like noon, I think, and we got to spend most of the day together which was actually pretty nice. Like there were a few awkward moments where you go from like being a couple to just being friends. And it's like, how close do you get? What are you allowed to do without making it awkward or whatever? But mostly it was pretty nice. We watched movies, talked a bit and it was okay. And then, you know, took the bus and in the bus, there was that whole process of you know, changing the nicknames on the chat and removing all the couple love whatever stuff. So that was kind of an awkward process, but I'm like, all right, at least it's done. And then I wrote the final chapter for my book on the bus. So I officially finished the challenge, but I'm going to make a separate video for that. So that was pretty much um, what happened. So yes, I got dubbed, even though it wasn't like the dumping part. That was the most painful part. It was that first part in the beginning when she tears her mind. I'm like, really? After all that investment, all that time, all that build up, all that expectation, all that hope, nothing? 
So I'm really glad we at least got to see each other, even though like the whole point was for us to like, you know, for me to finish the challenge and we see each other at night. And then when she's off, we get to spend like five full days together. And it's kind of part of me is like, oh, I would have kind of enjoyed that. But whatever, I respect whatever's meant to happen, what's going to happen. Now, the biggest takeaway I got from that was the realization. Well, two of them. First of all, the realization that when I'm traveling, I can't expect anything serious. It can only be casual. Yes, there was a chance it could lead to more, but I just can't keep getting my hopes up. Second thing is, every single one of my past relationships ended badly. Now, of course, that does make a certain degree of sense because if they hadn't ended badly, they probably wouldn't have ended. But there's just like, I noticed a recurring pattern of things not ending well. And maybe it's something about me, something that I don't quite understand. Or maybe it's the fact that I try to hold on to things for too long or try to make things happen that shouldn't happen. As an example, this. We both knew we wanted something different. The odds of something actually succeeding and happening between us, like long term, were very, very slim. Yet, I chose to ignore that and try to make it happen. And it didn't end well. Like, it wasn't blowing up and everything. And so, from that perspective, it was okay. I don't regret it. But it still didn't end well. And last serious relationship, like my girlfriend at the end of last year, before I left, in the beginning, she's like, hey, you want to travel? I want to settle down, have a family. So we're looking for different things. This isn't going to work. And then she changed her mind and we decided to make it work. And after a month, it blew up and it didn't work. So it's just, this is making me realize I can't hold on to things after like, there's a sign that it's not meant to happen. And it's like over and over that happens. And I'm noticing that's a pattern in my life. And not just for dating. Like I tend to hold on to things way past the point where I should. So that was a realization. The other thing is, um, oh yeah, another quick story that happened between the girl who ghosted me a couple weeks ago and this. There was another girl. So like shortly after the girl who ghosted me, <laughs> I wanted to date with a girl. And I'm like, I share that story of like, hey, that girl ghosted me. No re idea why. So we had a conversation about it. She's like, I don't understand why people do that. It doesn't make sense. It's so mean. And she's like, don't worry. I'm never going to ghost you. Guess what she did? She ghosted me. Crazy, right? And I'm just wondering like, okay, a lot of the times when people ghost you, it's not really anything you did. It's just something about them. Like they changed their mind for some small reason. And for them, it's just easier to ignore you than it is to actually tell you. But I'm like, okay, this girl made it a point to say that ghosting is mean. It sucks and she wouldn't do it. So why would she do it? And by then, like, you know, things like were ramping up with this other girl and everything. And I'm just like, okay, I'm going to cancel the date. Like, I don't feel good going on a date when I know I'm going to see this other girl soon. So I ended up canceling the date. But it's like there was a period of three, four days in between where the date was planned. And... Like, I messaged her maybe once a day or whatever, just like checking in, and there was no response. And eventually I'm like, okay, I'm, I canceled the date and everything, but it's like, she didn't know that. So from her, from her perspective, she was still completely ignoring me. Then eventually, like the day after we were supposed to have the date, which I canceled, which she didn't know that I canceled, she messages me saying like, oh, I'm so sorry if it feels like, if you thought that I ghosted you, it's just I was really busy with work and I didn't feel like checking my messages and like we're looking for different things and blah 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 and i'm just like okay you may think this wasn't ghosting but it was because the definition of ghosting is ignoring someone when like ending a relationship or like a relationship whether it's you know dating or friendship or whatever by ignoring the person and that is exactly what you did so whether you like to believe it or not you did ghost me and whatever it's okay I've moved on, I don't hold any grudges, it's fine. But you did ghost me. And then I'm like, hey, out of respect for myself, just to make things easier, um, I'm just gonna delete your number, block it, and that'll be the end of it. So that's pretty much what happened. So ghosted once, ghosted twice, and then this that kind of blew up in my face. Even though I really don't regret this last one, just because it's like, at least we tried it, at least I won't have any regrets. But 
Yeah, there's definitely a pattern here and it's something I need to look at. So some self-observation in the following weeks. <laughs> anyway, it's been 20 minutes, very long video. Sorry about that. But this was good. I've been waiting for a while to, you know, get the story out and now I'm happy that it's out and I can finally move on, even though it was kind of painful. I'm also thinking of potentially taking a break from dating, or if I keep dating, just keeping things very, very casual. Oh yeah, hmm. something I quickly should mention that I forgot to mention. Um, in the beginning, you know, because of my, <coughs> sorry, because of my issue, I need to take pills to help perform, especially in the beginning when I don't know someone, it's more intimidating, there's more pressure, so it's not as easy to perform. So I usually take a pill. And with her, I did too. And she's like, I, after two days, she's like, hey, I don't want you to take pills anymore. It's not good for your body long term. Like, I don't want to be part of that and contribute to your, like, hell or anyway, to contribute to any problems in the future. And we had a conversation. I'm like, all right, I'm going to not take him. And while we're together and everything, it's like, whatever happens, happens. It's like having that relief of pressure of not needing to perform, not needing to do anything or have any expectations or anything, I was really looking forward to that. And that was one of the biggest letdowns when like the next day she's like, yeah, okay, I can't do this. And part of me in the background is like, is it related to sex? Because right after we had that conversation, things changed and it's like, she said it wasn't and I trust her, it probably wasn't. But I think that part of it subconsciously, maybe it was. So anyway, I don't know. I'm not quite sure what that has to do with anything. I just thought I'd share it because the whole point of this is to just be open, honest, vulnerable, and not hold anything back. All right, so that was the story of how I got dumped. <laughs> Check back in to next video for the story about how my challenge went. All right, check back in later.